All right, so you wanted to see how to be able to change things uh, on a job level. Um, what I'm going to do is show something that, uh, that I just kind of thought of. It's something we can do where we can kind of use these concepts to do whatever we want, really. Um, we can go to our job, and you'll see I have uh, two notes set up, PL1 panel and PL2 panel. Those are the names of some materials that I created. As a matter of fact, let me show you that. Go to material, and you can see I've got panel stock. We'll go here all the way to the bottom. We've got PL1 panel. I don't have a PL2 panel. Let's copy that and make that right now. Um, PL2 panel. Um, I'm not going to use it in the job, but that's, uh, that's how we can easily create very similar materials throughout. It's a composite material. Um, it can be a panel stock. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, for the reporting purposes. Now I go to utilities and parameters. And you can see I have these two prompts. If the parameters is PL1, PL2. This is irrelevant compared to what the prompt should be. The prompt is what's going to show up in Cabinet Vision for us to know that it's a note. I've set the type to text. Uh, the values are just default values and the class is job. If you needed this to change per room, you could uh, set it up for room, but you'd have to do something a little bit different than what we're doing right now. Um, and then set it to as a note. Uh, we'll create a new job. I'll go to my job notes, and I just picked a, a Wilson Art color because it's the first thing that thought came to mind. Wilson Art uh, Y0608 60, which is the Coco line color. All right. So now we know that the name of the material by default is PL1 panel. Um, if I hit OK, uh, actually, before I do that, let's go to the materials of the cabinet and change the base to the PL1 schedule, which has all of the uh, PL1 panel stuff set up in it. Uh, you can see here um, I've got this set up to how I want it to be for that. Um, and we can do this for every material. We could just create a drawer guide material and then change the job notes to be whatever the drawer guide's supposed to be. Um, we could do it for anything. And once we set this up as a basis, you'll be able to add materials to your parameters there. And every time you start a new job, you'll be able to enter in what the information is supposed to be. Um, but I've got PL1, I hit OK. Then I will go to just drop in a regular cabinet. You see it's got the PL1 panel, uh, but when I go to my reports, I modified the uh, report that we made earlier. I went in and in my job materials, you can see I have this job name field, and there's that note that we added in for the PL1 panel. What I did for that was in the SQL, I just added uh, notes dot note as job name to the select field. Then I encapsulated this in parentheses right here. All right, and then I did a left join uh, of the notes table on notes.prompt like CX like CX material dot name. Um, because of the different types of fields, a material, the CX material name is a text field, while the uh, notes.prompt is a memo field, and because of the difference, we can't do an equals, we have to do like. Um, because we're just typing in fixed text, we don't have to worry about whether, that, whether like will do anything weird. Um, if we add any wildcard names, wildcards like parentheses or asterisk, to the name of the material, then we have to start uh, changing how we do things. Um, but if you just type in the name of the material like PL1, it's just going to find something that's pretty much PL1, um, so on and so forth. Um, then we just need to go here to the group by and add the notes.note so that we don't get an error. And what that's done is it looked into the notes table and found a, uh, a material name, that PL1 panel, that has the same prompt as what's in our uh, notes and it pulled that value right there and there's that right there 
showing in that column. I'll hit close and then I'll design the report and you'll notice uh, it shows the material name and we did that again with in the previous videos going to job materials and in the data line instead of having just job materials name I created a conditional statement and let me show you how I created that um, let's go ahead and just delete this out and we'll go condition which will be the tr it needs to return a true or false value to say whether this is one way or it is another um, so that we can get either what happens if it's true or what happens if it's false so I need not is null um, open parentheses job materials dot job name close parentheses and what we're doing is we're using the is null function and I'll actually click edit to show you how it is um, what it looks like see there's is null and that's a function that determines whether the value of the field is null or not that's a special value uh, that means it just there's nothing there it's it's not just blank it's just nothing um, and our left join will cause anything that doesn't have a note attached to it to be null so if it isn't if the job materials dot job name is null do something but we don't want it to be null we want to see what happens if it's not null so we just put the not keyword in front of it so that it does the reverse of it um, we hit OK still there just the way we had it and now we're gonna say what happens if job materials dot job name is not null we're gonna use job materials dot job name then if it is if it is null what do we want it to be well instead of the job name we want it to be job materials dot name which would be the default value that we had before we can click insert and you can see everything comes up if any of these fields were not this kind of like blood red color I don't really know what other color to call that um, maybe brick red some kind of red um, then we know it's not a valid field the functions like is null and condition should be bold, uh, just a bold color and not it's a special keyword but it doesn't get anything special since it works and it didn't throw up an error like for instance if we had done this you could see oh there is no is null that's not correct so uh, whenever you get these errors just kinda kinda read it and see what it says to figure out why we're getting that error so let me put that T back and you see now it evaluates correctly we can just hit OK hit OK close this save it and we'll view the report and you'll see nothing 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 next page instead of the panel PL1 panel saying uh, PL1 panel it says the actual value that I entered into that note um, and you can see this is the materials that I get now this is just a brief example again like I said you could we can start if we really wanted to we could go here and see three-quarter two-sided melamine let's go here we'll go to job um, say notes actually parameters let's add another uh, parameter we'll call it text note name we'll call it uh, underscore M note doesn't really matter what it is uh, the description which should be the prompt should be three-quarter two-sided melamine and we'll just hit OK all right we'll go to our notes Oh, I'm gonna show up let's close this there we go so it refresh that now we can say this is a panel all right I hit OK hit reports report center and there you go now we didn't have anything set up before prior to this you saw I just added the parameter in and gave it a new name um, we could even leave the notes blank and so that it never ever shows a note and we only manipulate the notes for materials as we need them inside of a job and what I mean by that is we literally go to the job we'll go to parameters we'll delete the, can I delete this yeah I can delete that um, 
underscore M note will delete that and hit OK. Now I have no notes. If I reload this, and you'll see there's not even a notes tab. So no notes. I go to reports, report center, uh, set up reports. Let's go ahead and put this, let's add a new group. We'll call it uh, one dash testing. And we will take this and put it in here so we don't have to keep going to set up the reports. And there we go. You can see now it's the original default names. But let's say like, oh, okay, I don't want that three-quarter tandem to be called that. I want that something else. So I know it's three-quarter tandem. So I'll be able, again, go to job, parameters, add, a text, note, call it whatever we want there. Say three-quarter tandem. Hit OK and OK. Reload the dialog. Say box material. And there we go. So that's just an easy way where you could be able to easily change the, the names of material. So all we have to do really is work on the back end of our report. And then as we add notes and remove notes from the job, it starts to manipulate it and make it really cool and fun. Um, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions on what I did, please feel free to ask. Uh, thank you very much and have a good day.